and I welcome you back to the Debrinic channel and today we're going to be talking about Lake Oroville as we are doing the daily update tonight and we also have you ask I find segment coming up and if you think this is worthy of a like at the end of the video please consider doing that and if you think this is worthy of a subscribe and you haven't already please consider doing that as well without further ado let's roll right over to windy.com and see what is going on in the united states for the next three days and you can see right here down south, a little bit of rain still coming, and then you can see Florida is fairly dry, Texas is fairly dry, Illinois, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska is fairly dry, but look at this big atmospheric river that has shifted to the north, and Seattle's going to get pounded in the next three days, and the state of Washington in general, Seattle is going to receive around 2.23 and down here by Ashford 5.63 and I'm sure that's new snow and of course it is but not that much new snow 21 inches we go back to the rain accumulation you can see that Olympia over here is going to get four inches in Olympia and then we go down here and you can see 6.1 so this is going to be major flooding in the next three days something that we're going to have to keep an eye on as everything has moved there we're going to go to South Oregon here and see what's going on they said 13 inches a few days ago and now they're just saying 4.32 in the next three days so we go the next five days and that's 5.3 so more comes in the next 10 days 5.56 we roll down to Lake Shasta down here and we will see what is going on down at Lake Shasta 2.55 in Lake Oroville 1.59 and then a good solid 1.2 in the next 10 the next three days 0.71 and we go the next five 1.21 and the next 10, 1.2. So you get it in the next five, you're going to get it. And then it's going to dry out a bit. And I want to check the temperatures to see if the temperatures increase. You can see that in the middle of the country that they continue to increase this weekend. So if you're living in Kansas City, St. Louis, Arkansas, Memphis, Illinois, even Illinois is going to be 44, which is warmer than it has been. Branson, Missouri, 55 degrees, a good weekend to go to Branson if you're heading out that way. California over here as we scoot in. Check out the temperatures here for Saturday, 38. There's going to be a lot of snow melt this weekend, especially right through here. And then down here, you're going to see a lot of this move out Saturday evening. So a big chunk of this moves back up. We continue to watch another cold fronts pushing through to the south and then it eases a bit and then it pushes back through and you can see the blistering cold up here and then check this out a big swath of warm air coming through and this is Wednesday and in Nebraska and South Dakota here 45 degrees all the way up here 34 the freeze lines way up here 32 and then the freeze lines down to the northern Illinois but then it's cold right through here but you could see that it's starting to warm up through here so we screwed in like Springfield Illinois and Peoria and over here in Louisville and Cape Girardeau in Springfield Missouri Fort Smith almost 50 degrees Memphis 40 degrees and Dodge City Kansas over here 46 Wichita 46 and then Vegas check out Vegas Vegas is fairly warm too so you can see that it's already starting to warm up 49 we have some people asking about lake tahoe 35 on next wednesday and then we scoot back out and we watch the cold air and see what goes on as we scoot it's going to be relatively dry as generally there's a thing called the january thaw that happens every year especially in my neck of the woods i'm in illinois and every year it warms up a bit in the middle of january which is for the par this is all the way out the 13th so that's just a couple of days away from the 15th you can see the real cold airs up here there's really no polar vortex breaking through the closest it gets is to superior here and i want to check on the ice tonight as well see how much the lakes are frozen i bet you they're really not so many people say that's global warming but just a few years back we had record ice so i mean that can go either way so let's check that out right now so here we are at the great lakes surface environmental analysts and this is for january 3rd 2022 the percentage pixels with the data within 10 days is 84.2 percent and the data of ice analysts is 
three. The Great Lakes total ice coverage is 5.2. That's terrible for this time of year, and that's not a good situation for the Great Lakes whatsoever. Generally, this time of year, they're a lot more than 5.2, and that just goes to show how warm December was that these things only have 5.2 ice coverage. There hasn't really been any cold air till just recently, so that's why there's no ice on the lakes right now whatsoever. 5.2 is just terrible. So that's what's going on with the ice levels. Now, tonight, you ask and I find. Tonight, somebody wants to know about snow levels, a few people want to know about different lakes, and we have a pretty busy segment. We're going to go down to the land under as one of my viewers down there want to know about what's going on in Australia. So we'll be touching base with that. And without further ado, let's roll right over to Elliot. As Elliot writes, Love the updates. Maybe a ski snowboard snow dip of the ski areas by Lake Tahoe and Colorado. Already do them. That would be awesome. Thanks for the awesome content. You are welcome, Elliot. And thank you, everybody who tunes in. Much appreciated so down by tahoe down here as we scoot by tahoe your current snow depth right here is 43.7 inches and i'm not sure where the ski resorts are but right through here you got 47 to 46 to 43 you got all kinds of different amounts but over here north of tahoe you have 51 inches down here south of tahoe you got 45 we go over by big bear valley over here you got 50 and good swath over four feet of snow four and a half you got 57 here which is fantastic and down here by yosemite 48 mammoth lakes over here 50 and you said the colorado as well so we'll scoot back over to the colorado and just like i did last night you got 63 over here 51 over here you got aspen over here i know aspen's a good ski town 45 and over here 33 so over by grand junction 9 down here you got 51 so you have a whole lot of snow and there is not a whole lot of new snow coming so except for in the colorados there's quite a bit coming here in the Colorado in the next three days. 20 inches over by Steamboat Springs and Grandy over here 12 inches and over here 16.4, 14.4. So you get the gist. There's a whole lot coming. So thank you Elliot for the suggestion. I hope that's what you wanted and off to the next you ask and I find the next one is from Cody. Cody says, love the content. Can you possibly show some lake levels from Theodore Roosevelt Lake from the Salt River in Arizona? That would be great if you could. Well, let's go see what we can find, Cody. Here is the Roosevelt Lake. Official elevation is 2,125.36 feet, and the current volume is 1,141,963 acre feet. Percentage of pool is 70%, and the last reading was today at 1.4, and you could see the chart down here as this thing has been on the increase the last few days the current level is your 2125.26 feet and there you have it now df please report on detroit lake levels in oregon thanks so We'll go see if we can find that next. So here we are at Detroit Lake water level in Oregon. And your current water level is 1,448.65 feet. Tuesday, January 4th, 2022, 2.40 p.m. The level is 120.35 feet below full pool of 1,569. Changes since yesterday, negative 2.20 feet. And they say winter full pool is 1,450 feet. So it's about two feet from where they like to keep it in the winter time so it's right around where it normally is so there you have that we are off to Rowan's junk. Can you please check on Lake Paris? We live in the area. Sure, Rowan's. Lake Paris water level is 1,579.12 feet MSL. And this was taken Monday, January 3rd, 2022 at 12 a.m. The level is 30.62 feet above full pool of 1,548.50 feet. And the thing has increased 0 0.07. So there you have that. We have one more more to get to tonight you ask i find segment this is the last one of the night and the last one of the night is from off grid aussie prepper who he asked can you do airline beach of old australia's 
Sure, we can go down there and take a look. Here's Airlie Beach the last 24 hours. That is just beautiful. You can see the water going up and down. That, that is the Coral Sea Island territory. So you can see that the Coral Sea is here. And it's basically off the Atlantic, more or less. And you are going to get some rain in the next 10 days as we scoot back in here. Almost 1.88 inches and I believe you guys are centimeters so let me just for you I will switch that over to millimeters and 47.88 millimeters for you and then I want to go up to temperature and see what your temperature is supposed to be and beautiful 83 degrees and we will go to Celsius there 28 Celsius so there you have that that is what's going on at Airlisle Beach and thank everybody for typing in if you have something you want please let me know now let's roll over to Lake Folsom and see what's going on because many people are wanting to know why the levels are dropping. So without further ado, let's roll right over to Folsom. Here we are at Folsom. You can see the capacity 977,000 acre feet. The current elevation is 426.08 feet. Storage acre feet is 579,194. Storage change negative 3,385. 59% capacity. That is what is going on there. And then your outflows are exceeding your inflows, which is surprising. They must be expecting because of the higher snowpack down there that this thing's going to increase. But as of right now, your outflows are not matching your inflows and they're already letting out 5,338 CFS per minute and your inflows are only 3,663 so there you have it we go up to Orville it has been 500 the last several days this thing has actually come up to 563 so we'll be watching that to see if this thing really increases now the inflows are great they're 4,524 in the last 24 hours and we will get to the water level here in a minute but just a note that this has increased so I'm wondering if they're starting to kick the Hyatt power plant back on on. and we're going to go to Shasta and see what the inflows are compared to the outflows. Your inflows here at Lake Shasta are 8,072. Your outflows are 3,010. So they're letting more coming in than going out except for at Folsom and Lake Trinity that I do every once in a while. It's 29% full with the outflows being 345 and your inflows being 525. The lake is 29% full and your elevation is 2,220.17 feet. Let's roll over and see Lake Oroville and see what's going on there. Lake Oroville, 717.65 feet, MSL, Tuesday, January 4th, 2022 at 2 p.m. The level is 182.35 feet below full pool of 900 and changes since yesterday. This thing is back on the increase of over a foot, 1.60. Yesterday it was 70, I think, somewhere in there. Let's roll over to Lake Shasta and see what is going on. Lake Shasta water level is 915.22 feet MSL. Tuesday, January 4th, 2021 at 1 p.m. The level is 151.78 feet below full pool of 1,067. Changes since yesterday. This thing is almost a foot 0 0.93 feet. And that is all I have for tonight. Thank you everybody who requested a bunch of different things. There was one guy that wanted a lake that I could not find. I went back and told him that I looked for it and I couldn't find it. If there's a lake that you want, be mindful that not every lake has water levels that you can find. So if you want a lake, please be mindful of that. And it is kind of disappointing to find out that your lake doesn't have water levels. Well, where I live, my lake doesn't have water level either. So it happens to quite a few of them actually. So with that being said, you guys have a blessed day and we will see you on the next one. God bless.